Okay. Hi there, Jackie. Hi. So we have here with us Jackie Bertoldo, and Jackie is the Assistant Director of Nutrition for Stanford University Residential and Dining Enterprise. Thank you so much for joining us. As a leader in translating research into practical strategies for guiding policy and practice, Jackie works collaboratively with academics, chefs, university administrators, and operational staff to study the food environment and design transformative dining experiences that promote healthier, more sustainable eating practices for the Stanford community and beyond. She is currently pursuing her doctorate in public health at Johns Hopkins Bloomer School of Public Health as a fellow with the Bloomberg American Health Initiative, specializing in nutrition and food systems. We're going to talk today about sustainability specifically, but um, first, Jackie, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you do at Stanford. Sure. And well done with that bio. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I um, my role is Assistant Director of Nutrition at Stanford University, and I'm part of this division on campus called Residential and Dining Enterprises that really oversees all of the student housing and dining operations. Um, there were a number of hats. Um, I oversee a program called the Eat Well at Stanford program, um, which really is there to support students in navigating their dietary needs, um, whether they're an athlete or they have a food allergy or they're vegan, or maybe they're just looking to eat in a way that supports their physical and emotional health. Um, I also work collaboratively with other campus stakeholders across campus, um, trying to kind of work together to create a, a healthy food environment. Um, I also support our sustainable food program um, and that incorporates a number of initiatives that are really aimed at reducing both the environmental footprint of our dining operations, um, but also engaging students um, about how their food choices impact the environment. And then probably the most unique, but also probably my favorite part of my job is um, supporting the university and its academic mission by providing opportunities for students um, to learn about nutrition and sustainability and food systems um, in a very applied way. So Stanford doesn't have a food or nutrition related degree program. So students that are interested in this area really look to us for opportunities to get involved um, you know, in the campus food system, but also you know, in other opportunities outside of just Stanford. Um, and we also work with faculty to do research. Uh, we like to call the dining halls living laboratories. Um, and so we've done a lot of work with a number of faculty, actually faculty from every single school at Stanford. Um, a lot of it looking at how environmental and behavioral changes can you know, positively shift eating behaviors, whether that be healthier or more sustainable. Um, and I should probably mention also kind of in that same grain that Stanford University is a co-founder of an organization called the Menus of Change University Research Collaborative, um, which is an arm of the Menus of Change initiative, originally started by Harvard School of Public Health and the Culinary Institute of America, um, that aims to bring together stakeholders from across campuses. Um, so that includes faculty, university administrators, campus dining programs um, to kind of help work together um, to promote healthier, more sustainable food systems. And the MCRC has grown now to a network of, I think over 60 colleges and universities um, collectively serving over 800,000 meals a day. <laughs> um, so the idea is if we can all work together um, within universities, but also across universities, um, to try to accelerate what we know about how we can help people eat better, um, that we can really uh, create much more change than just what would be possible at one single university. That's a little bit about what I do. Awesome. That all sounds amazing. And you mentioned sustainability a couple times, right? And I think um, as, as students, but also as people that engage in food systems, sometimes there's a little bit of confusion around what that really means. So 
with, you know, from your background uh, working with Stanford, both in academics and food service, can you give us a sense of what you consider sustainability really um, means? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's a concept that's uh, very broad and, and has a lot of uh, interpretations. I think for me, sustainability, you know, in a food context specifically, um, means being, you know, conscious about the long-term impacts of the food that we eat, um, you know, on the health of people, the health of the environment, um, but also I think, you know, society as a whole. Um, and I think it's about promoting a food system that is safe, that is equitable, um, but also I think adaptable to change, um, you know, which is something we can delve into a little bit more. But I think with the, um, the environmental challenges that are ahead of us, I think one of the concerns and one of the things that a lot of people talk about with sustainability is, you know, how do we maintain our food system? How do we feed people um, as, as the globe is, is changing and, and weather patterns are changing and, um, you know, the way we eat is changing. And um, yeah, I like, you know, I think it's, it's about asking the question, um, you know, can our food system sustain itself um, and our population that's growing across the world um, so that future generations can also have access to safe, nutritious food, you know, without compromising the Earth's resources, um, you know, or accelerating um, climate change, which is a really, you know, probably one of the most pressing issues of our, of our generation. So you had mentioned the health of people, but you also mentioned the health of the environment, right? So <clears throat> can you tell us a little bit about how you can, how anyone can really think about how those can, can work together and, and um, you know, especially for budding dietitians and people that are interested in food. Yeah, this is a, a really big issue. So you know, what, are, yeah. what are ways those can um, really coincide? I think the more, you know, being a dietitian uh, and, and having been trained from the nutrition perspective, I think the more that I've learned about sustainability, um, the more I've been kind of pleasantly surprised how much overlap there is actually between um, what makes a sustainable diet and what makes a healthy diet. Um, you know, and I think uh, one of the ways you can think about sustainability um, is being able to provide food to people <laughs> that actually sustains and nourishes them. Like if we had this amazing food system that supported the health of the environment, but we weren't able to actually meet the dietary needs of our population, that's not really sustainable. Um, and so I think there's uh, definitely a very strong uh, overlap in terms of, of sustainability and nutrition. I think the more that um, you know, dietitians and people who have been trained in nutrition can kind of think dynamically about also um, what types of eating habits support, um, you know, the long-term viability of our food system. Um, I think the better off all of us will be <laughs> um, in, in the future, again, because we, we don't want to be making recommendations um, purely on the basis of health that are going to compromise our ability to feed everyone a healthful diet for future generations. So do you think it, it should be on the top of mind for anyone that's really practicing dietetics and nutrition? Absolutely. I think it's, I mean, I think it's a huge opportunity, honestly, um, especially because as I mentioned, there is a lot of and growing amount of evidence that diets that are, you know, considered more sustainable, um, particularly diets that maybe are more, you know, plant forward. Um, so incorporating more plant foods um, maybe limiting the amount of, of meat or animal products in the diet, you know, not completely eliminating, um, but just uh, in moderation, um, have a number of health benefits as well as a number of environmental benefits. And so I think focusing on, you know, those types of things where there's a lot of overlap um, and there's a lot of benefits on both sides. Um, I think those who, you know, in the nutrition community and dietitians in particular, people that the public looks to um, for advice about what to eat. Um, I think the more that that, you know, that group 
can get engaged in conversations also around food systems and sustainability. Um, again, I think the better off uh, you know, everyone's going to be um, in the future. So you, um, I, I would love it if you can give an example of, of like plant forward, right? So I'm guessing there are a lot of people that might even not be sure what that means. So maybe you can describe sure. plant forward a little bit and then give yeah. an example of a success of, of plant forward, maybe that you experienced at Stanford. Sure. Yeah. So the idea behind plant forward is that um, it's a, a type of eating pattern that um, celebrates plants and really emphasizes plants. And when I say plants, you know, I mean anything that's in the plant kingdom. So, and primarily, you know, we want to focus on kind of whole, less processed versions of those plants. Um, so vegetables, beans and legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds, all of those wonderful things that we know have so many nutritional benefits. Um, it's really celebrating those and making those kind of the bulk of the diet, but also recognizing that for most people, um, you know, eliminating uh, meat or animal products um, maybe isn't feasible or isn't even nutritionally recommended um, in certain cases. So how can we still include those foods in the diet, but in a way that is um, kind of more moderated? So an example um, that I think is um, pretty prominent in my world is what we call like the protein flip. So you think about a traditional, you know, American plate, and it's usually, you know, a big uh, six, eight ounce portion of, of meat, maybe it's steak or chicken. Um, and then you have, you know, like two little small sides, maybe of like some sort of grain or, uh, you know, some sort of vegetable. So the idea is like, what if you flip that? Like, what if you actually made plants the center of the plate and meat was more um, of a condiment um, or a flavor enhancer, or kind of that little added uh, uh, benefit. Um, and a lot of cultures across the world eat this way. Um, and a lot of times it's actually not even driven from a nutrition or environmental perspective. It's just the fact that like meat is very expensive in a lot of parts of the world. Um, and so, uh, you know, in a lot of the cultures um, that we look to the Mediterranean um, or, you know, a lot of uh, Asian cultures, that's very typical um, to have, you know, a little bit of meat that's used as kind of the condiment um, and still, you know, making a very delicious, very filling, very satisfying meal. Um, so I think the idea behind Plant Forward is kind of how can we integrate that concept into kind of American menus and, um, you know, the type, the way that we eat here, which is traditionally more focused kind of on meat being the center of the plate. Um, and so we've, you know, there's a lot of ways we've incorporated this concept in my work at Stanford. Um, you know, we've, we've actually done some research around it to show that if I make a grain bowl and I replace, you know, half the chicken or, or beef with um, you know, more beans and legumes um, that, uh, and present it to students, a lot of times they don't even notice. <laughs> uh, they still find it very delicious, very satisfying, um, and, and that actually it's not really necessary to have, you know, that huge portion of meat um, to really uh, excite our diners or to get students um, to eat something that is that is a little bit healthier, a little bit more sustainable. So again, the idea is not that we are taking meat away or, or limiting the options. We're just kind of uh, changing the proportions in a way that still, you know, celebrates all those ingredients. So do you, what do you think the future of food will be? I mean, given the, you talk about the protein flip, mm -hmm. um, do you have any thoughts about where you think the future might might go um, with food. Uh, I mean, I, I sure hope it moves in that direction. Um, you know, I think right now, when people kind of think about the future of food, especially around sustainability, you know, there's a lot of buzz right now about meat analogs or you know meat replacements, um, things that are just uh, look, taste, feel, smell, <laughs> just like meat. Um, and I think one of the things you know being from a nutrition perspective um, that I think the jury's kind of still out is, is are those products actually a healthier alternative? And I think it, it matters what you're comparing it to, right? Because it's, um, you know, if you're comparing uh, beyond meat to pure beef, um, maybe it is, you know, a slightly better option, slightly healthier from a nutritional perspective. But if you compare that to like 
beans and brown rice or, you know, different uh, plant-based whole food ingredients, um, like by far those would be uh, more nutritionally appropriate. So um, anyway, so I, I hope that, uh, you know, I, I think the meat alternatives are a good option for people who are looking for maybe a gateway <laughs> into more plant forward eating. But, you know, I really, I would hope that this idea of kind of being more plant forward as opposed to, you know, trying to get people to be exclusively plant based, which I think is really not a feasible goal. Um, and like I said, you know, from a nutritional perspective, sometimes not even uh, warranted. Um, but finding new products, new dishes, you know, restaurants really getting on board, chefs really getting on board with this idea of like, let's celebrate plants and make plants as delicious as possible, um, but not necessarily having to omit uh, meat or animal products, but using them really as a way to like enhance the flavor. Um, and, and I think that's a much more approachable way to engage the public about eating healthier and more sustainably. Um, but I, I know, I, I mean, there's a lot of trends from a sustainability perspective, and I think it'll be really interesting to see kind of how those, how those evolve. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting because it's like, I hope the future actually pulls a little bit from the past in terms of, you know, food products that maybe used to be more prevalent in terms of what we ate, um, you know, or even looking at, you know, food systems, the way we used to produce food way back, um, maybe more locally, more ecologically minded. Um, you know, I kind of hope maybe we come full circle in the future, incorporates more of those uh, kind of past ways of doing things that were a little bit more, uh, more sustainable and, and better for people's health. Well, with that, what do you think are some challenges that keep keep the system from going in that direction? There's a lot of them. <laughs> uh -huh. it's, you know, the food system's complicated, um, and it's and it's massive. And you know, I think what's interesting is also just given the current context of everything with you know the COVID um, pandemic. Um, I think people are starting to see just how complicated our food system is. Um, like the curtains kind of uh, being unveiled and, and people are realizing, you know, how can we have food that's going to waste on the farms and, and getting thrown out while there are all these people who are hungry? Um, there's just these things that just don't seem to make sense. And I think the reason being is that our food system is large, so large and so complex. Um, and there's, you know, a small number of very large players that influence what people eat. Um, you know, there's, there's five or six companies <laughs> that control the majority, like 80% of what's on the grocery store shelves. Um, and those companies have a lot of power and they don't necessarily want things to change because it's very profitable to do things the way they're currently being done, you know, despite the consequences to people's health uh, and the, the health of the environment. So, um, you know, I think there's a number of challenges in terms of consumer expectations, um, you know, the, the types of foods that people uh, demand, the consumer demand um, is a big piece of it, but I think also, you know, there's certainly political considerations um, in terms of policies that, um, you know, could be used to support healthier, more sustainable food options or make those options more affordable for people or more accessible, um, you know, and then I think definitely there needs to be some engagement with food companies, um, you know, to try to motivate them to, you um, you know, and think more about the health impacts and the sustainability impacts of, of the way they produce food and the types of food they produce, um, you know, and see if there's more of a shift. And obviously all these things are like very interrelated. <laughs> um, and so I think it's going to take a, a multifaceted approach um, and a lot of efforts from a lot of different people with a lot of different expertise um, to try to, to, to move us in that direction. Um, but, you know, I'm hopeful uh, I think the young, you know, the, the younger generation, the enthusiasm that we see, um, you know, for really bringing about change, um, I think is really encouraging. And I, I hope we can kind of put continued pressure um, on all of these entities to move in the right direction. Well, it sounds to me the way you described MCURC, it, the intention is to be able to build a little bit of that pressure. <clears throat> but also awareness, right? So yeah. I think you said 800,000 meals um, in total. And, 
Yeah. And I mean, the way we like to think about that, and, and we think about this at Stanford too, is, you know, the experience that students have when they come eat with us. Um, it's not just about getting them to eat healthier, more sustainably while they're with us. It's really how do we take it the next step of, you know, engaging students in this conversation and, and kind of, you know, shedding light on some of these concerns of what, you know, really is going to impact their future <laughs> um, and inspiring them, hopefully, um, to make different choices across the course of their lifetime. And you think about, you know, not just the number of meals they eat with us each year, but when they go off and, you know, start companies or, you know, start families or, um, you know, maybe get involved in corporate America or politics or any of these things, um, that they have that context um, around, you know, the, the role that the food system plays, um, you know, in so many aspects of our lives um, so that they can hopefully, uh, you know, make a greater impact than just, you know, what, what they're choosing to have for lunch today. Um, and just understand, you know, the power of their choices um, in influencing all of these different aspects. So certainly, you know, that's something we think a lot about at Stanford and, and the whole idea with MCRC is working collaboratively. Like these are, these are really monstrous problems <laughs> that we have to face. And I think the only way we can tackle them is by working together and working across lines and collaboratively across disciplines um, to think up new solutions. Um, you know, certainly from a health perspective, we've been trying to get people to eat healthier <laughs> um, for, you know, decades and, and nothing has really proven to be tremendously effective. And so I think the more that we can kind of think outside the box um, and uh, work together to accelerate the, the good ideas, the ideas that have promise, um, you know, hopefully the, the bigger impact we'll be able to make. Well, you, you've been talking about the dietitian's role, right? So, so many people look towards the dietitian as the nutrition professional to, to be able to guide people on what they eat. Um, do you think that the USDA dietary guidelines will start incorporating sustainability? They're the 2020 guidelines are due out soon. Yeah, you, well, un unfortunately, I think if, if we remember back to the 2015 dietary guidelines, the advisory committee had actually recommended the inclusion of sustainability, um, you know, given, I think, the, the strength of the evidence and the benefits of eating a more plant-forward diet for health, um, but also, I think, the importance of sustainability and ensuring, you know, healthy diets for future generations, which is also part of the diet, you know, the, the impetus of the dietary guidelines. Um, and so the, you know, the advisory committee had recommended that they, that be included, but because of a lot of, uh, you know, political pressure from special interest groups, primarily, you know, the meat and dairy industries, which the USDA also represents, so there's a little bit of conflict of interest there, um, that kind of got shot down. And, you know, my sense is that the controversy five years ago um, has kind of killed the chances for sustainability to be included in 2020, especially I think given our current political climate. So, you know, I do hope it will be considered in the future dietary guidelines, but, um, you know, I think we've got a ways to go in terms of really elevating public consciousness um, and putting the pressure that would be necessary um, you know, on the government and on these special interest groups um, to really incorporate that change. Um, so I'm hopeful that in the future, but I think probably unlikely for the 2020 dietary guidelines that those would be included. So it sounds to me from what you're saying is sustainability is a little bit of a, a political issue and, and hard to tease out. A lot of it, a political <laughs> issue, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, so with that, we're, we're getting your time with that, I guess, as a final question is, you know, what can, what can a student do now that doesn't feel cost prohibitive, that feels approachable and, um, you know, feels, feels like they can do something even if it's just in there every day, do you have any suggestions and something that they can do that feels like a more sustainable choice in their food? Sure. I mean, there's so many different ways, I think, because sustainability is such a broad topic. I mean, there's so many ways that students could engage, you know, dietetic students in particular, you know, could engage with the food system. I think just even learning more about some of these issues we've talked about and just kind of educating yourself about the food system, you know, I think 
as again, when I was trained as a dietitian, I think I was very focused on just kind of the end piece of that whole system in terms of trying to help people pick the right foods. But there's so many things that go into that, right? There's so many things that go into what food you can afford, what food um, appeals to you, um, you know, what food you grew up with and were exposed to and kind of your attitudes and your thoughts about food and all of these things that really influence what choices people make. Um, and so I think uh, the more as a dietitian or a dietitian in training that you can kind of learn about all of these pieces, all of these things that influence that system, um, I think the more empowered you will be to help, you know, educate your future patients or clients or to, you know, in your job to, to advocate for healthier, more sustainable food systems. And then, you know, I think the best way to learn about it is to try it out for yourself, right? And to try to see how you could incorporate, uh, you know, more sustainable eating practices into your day-to-day -day life. And again, I'll sound like a broken record, but, you know, I really think this idea of plant forward of just, you know, thinking about ways that you might be more mindful about incorporating more plants in your diet and you know, moderating the amount of, of, of meat and, and dairy. And I mean, I grew up in the Midwest. So I mean, like I, I grew up amongst, you know, the corn and soy fields and, uh, you know, with the, the big steak and mashed potatoes and veggies on my plate. And so I, I totally, um, you know, understand that perspective and kind of how um, attached to that idea of, of what makes kind of a balanced plate. Um, and so I would just, you know, encourage dietetic students to kind of be open-minded and to kind of, um, you know, question what they believe to be true or what they, you know, the, the habits that they, they themselves have developed and kind of test out some other ways of, of eating, incorporating, you know, more whole grains or more beans and legumes or trying new vegetables or going and visiting a farmer's market um, and, and just seeing how, how it makes you feel, uh, you know, and how, um, uh, and how you're able to do it in a way that really works for you. And I think that experience will be tremendously valuable as you enter into the uh, you know, professional world and, and want to help other people eat well. Um, it's a good time to start trying to figure out how to eat well yourself. Well, I really appreciate your time, Jackie. Thank you so much for your, um, the information you shared, both from Stanford, but also your experiences as a dietitian. You're so welcome. My pleasure.